Okay, greetings everyone in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, a.k.a. Jesus the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Welcome back to another Shabbat class. Uh, we get ready to get started today. Uh, I'm going to read my disclaimer before we get started because I think I might need it. <laughs> okay, all right. My disclaimer and love for all people. I show sure on Facebook to hear this and I want YouTube to hear it. I want everybody to hear it because we're about the truth of the scriptures and we will not apologize for teaching the truth and teaching the scriptures and the scriptures validate it itself. Okay, my disclaimer and love for all people. Greetings to everyone in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, a.k.a. Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. I am Brother Curtis Lewis, also known on Facebook and YouTube as Apostle Curtis Lewis. I am a born-again, messianic, Israelite follower of Christ and the way as described in the scriptures. I believe the Almighty God is awakening a remnant out of all nations of the true scattered house of Israel in fulfillment of the prophecy of Ezekiel concerning the scattered dry bones according to Ezekiel chapter 37. I believe in these last days that the Most High God is awakening for the most part the so-called African American Negro slave descendants to their true identity and their natural lineage to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I believe also there is an awakening of many Gentile believers to this same truth and that we all, uh, I'm sorry, and that we all will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air at his return. It is my sincere desire and prayer that through the teaching of the word today and with the help of the Holy Spirit, that we all can be brought to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure and fullness of the statue of Christ and of the love of the Heavenly Father. I'm going to ask my wife to open up in prayer as we teach this lesson today. <clears throat> Okay, amen. Now let's get to the lesson. I don't know if any of you all got your notes from last, uh, not last Sabbath, Sabbath before last, when I taught on the second Exodus and the second wilderness. Did any of y'all bring your notes? Anybody? Got any? You got some? Okay. Because we might ask for some of those uh, somewhere in the lesson. So just be prepared. But I'm going to be teaching the subject, the second Exodus and the second wilderness, part two. Uh, as I said earlier, I got quite a bit of activity on the part one that I taught two Sabbaths ago. So I'm gonna go back into it again and teach the subject entitled the second Exodus and the second wilderness, part two. It is amazing to me that a lot of people that have been in Christendom for many, many years have never really uh, taught about these things and it's said right in the scriptures. Uh, my text is going to be Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 14 and verse 15. That's Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 14 and verse 15. And it reads as follows, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, 
the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north yeah. and from the lands whether he had driven them and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Now, if you look closely at this verse right here, this verse talks about a second exodus when God Almighty would bring all 12 tribes back in the land of Israel. And he said that when that happened, no one would ever talk about the first exodus again. And I'm going to read this slowly again to show you that that's what this scripture is saying so that it don't seem like I'm giving an interpretation. We should not give interpretations to the scripture. No preacher, teacher, no scholar, no one's supposed to interpret the scripture. The scripture interprets itself. So I mean, let's read that one more time and see can we see the second exodus mentioned right here. And we know the second exodus of all 12 tribes of Israel has never happened in our lifetime. Even with people that's living in the Middle East calling themselves Jews or calling themselves the children of Israel, they even claim there's only one tribe over there and that's Judah. Well, the Bible don't agree with him bringing one tribe back and leaving 11 lost. It, it's just the Bible don't agree with that. The prophets don't agree with that. So how is it that John Hagee and all the, the, the Zionist movement accepted the fact that this is God bringing all the uh, Israelites back into the land like he promised when the prophets have never said nothing about bringing one tribe back and leaving uh, 11 tribes or 10 tribes or whatever. The Bible said when he bring all 12 tribes back in the land of Israel, that nobody would talk about the first exodus anymore. No. Where as long as I've been saved, 40, gone on 43 years, and as long as I've been uh, alive, everybody still talk about the first exodus. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they talk about when the children of Israel went through the wilderness. But uh, this scripture here showing there's going to be a second exodus when nobody would even mention the first one no more. And y'all know what that happened happened. Has it happened to any of y'all? And that hasn't happened in my lifetime. I've never heard it. And all of us Bible students and all of us preachers, especially in our black churches and in the evangelical churches, here it is right here in the scripture talking about a second exodus, and we don't even discuss it. So that's why I'm teaching it today. That's good. So Jeremiah, I mean, let's read it slow again. Jeremiah 16, 14. Therefore, behold, the days come. If this don't, these days going to come. And the reason we know these days has not come yet is because we still teach and talk about the first exodus. Right. But this Bible said that when the second exodus happened, nobody going to even talk about the first exodus no more. Mm -hmm. So it says, therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said. Now, now, now is this Bible true or, the, or false? Mm -hmm. This Bible is true. Everybody on Facebook, everybody on YouTube, you're going to have to conclude this Bible is true. And it's inspired of God. All scriptures given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be uh, perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So, here the word of God is saying, Therefore, behold, the days come. There's coming a day, saith the Lord. He said this. That it shall no more be said. What? The Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. It's coming a day when no one going to talk about the first time God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. Because they're going to be too busy talking about the second time he brought them up out of uh, Egypt called the Babylonian system and all the nations of the world. And so we know that day has not come yet. So this is a prophecy of something that's going to happen in the future. And I'm t telling you, this is the second exodus. Mm -hmm. When he break the James chapter 1 verse 1 said to, to, to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. And ever since James wrote his letter until up until today in 2022, the true bloodline 12 tribes are still scattered in every nation on the planet. But there is coming another exodus. 
there's coming another time when the Most High going to bring them out of all of these nations where they had been taken captive, and meaning they was taken as slaves to all of these nations, and their, their descendants still live in every nation on the planet. And in this second exodus, when the Messiah and his power and his angels come, he going to send his angels to gather these people from every nation on the planet. This is the second exodus, and this is when nobody will ever talk about the first exodus again. Yeah. Right here in the scripture, so let's read it again. Therefore, the, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Verse 15. But, so but changes something. But, the Lord liveth. This is what they're going to talk about. They ain't going to talk about each, uh, et, uh, uh, the exodus from Egypt, Egypt under Pharaoh no more. They ain't going to talk about the trip through the wilderness after they left Pharaoh no more. They're going to talk about something else. That day is coming. It's what this prophet is saying. But, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel. Watch where he brought them from. The land of the north, from all the lands, whether he had driven them, meaning they went into captivity, slavery, all over the world, off ships, glory to God, and they're still in these nations, still haven't been paid reparations, and we can identify who those peoples are easy. Glory to God. So it says, but the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from the lands where he had driven them. And I will bring again into their land that I gave unto their forefathers. Now, he said he going to do this. He's not saying the government going to have to come up with a ballful declaration and take some land from somebody. He ain't said nothing about that. He ain't said nothing about the Gentile nations going to get together uh, and decide how they're going to split up Africa and go in a land and take it and then put people back in the land. No, he said he going to do it. He said that, um, but the Lord living that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from the lands, uh, from all the lands, whether he had driven them, not where they migrated, where he had driven them through captivity and slavery. And it says, and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. So all 12 tribes coming back at some point in, in this earth history. But we know ever since 70 AD, when the temple was destroyed, thousands of those Judeans was killed. Thank you. And uh, Israelite, the 10 tribes had migrated. And Judah and Benjamin and some of the Levites was the last one to be dispersed into all the nations on the planet, according to Messiah, because he said, you're going to be led away captive into all nations as slaves. And he said, you're going to fall by the edge of the sword and the temple was going to be destroyed. Well, ever since the temple been destroyed, Israel been scattered in every nation on the planet through slavery. Okay? But the Bible is telling us that there's coming a time when he's going to bring them back and give them back their land. And they're going to they're have to make another trip through the wilderness with Christ being the king. He's going to be the second Moses. And really and truly, he's the savior. But Moses said the father was going to raise up someone like unto me. That's Christ. And he's going to bring them back through the wilderness and march them back into their land. That has not happened yet. Because everybody's still talking about the first time the children of Israel came out of Egypt. So we're talking about a second exodus and a second trip through the wilderness that's in the prophets. What is that? We're going to study again on that, and this is part two. All right. Under my introduction, number one, I said last week or week before last, and I will say again that for nearly 43 years of hearing many ministers and many messages taught in Christendom, I have heard many people teach on the children of Israel. I've heard many of them teach on the exodus out of uh, Egypt uh, from under Pharaoh. I have heard many of them teach on the trip through the wilderness, but I have never heard any of them teach anything concerning the second exodus and the second trip through the wilderness. Now, if you 
claim to be a Bible student, if you claim to believe everything in the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation, well, then this message needs to be heard and there are some questions needs, need to be asked. Why is it nobody has ever taught and explained this to you okay. since you've been in the church world and since you've been a Christian? And that was my question. And all I know is within the last four to five years is when the Most High revealed it to me. Amen. And then he started dealing with me about who the true children of Israel uh, really, really are. And so now we got all kinds of stuff going on in social media and on these news networks and platforms because of this movie called Hebrews to Negroes. And it should not be called anti-Semitic to look into history or to at least look at a movie and determine for oneself if it's true or false. Why do we have to try to hide it? Why do you have people high up trying to uh, stop people, uh, social media networks trying to hide a movie. Let everybody see the movie. Mm -hmm. Let everybody see it. Let all the news media see it. Let all the black people see it. Let all the white people see yeah. it. And let everybody make their own decision. Thank you. Yeah, I don't need you hiding something. And I don't need you trying to silence something. Give me a chance to read for myself. Judge for myself. Yeah. And then let me go to this Bible and see what the Bible say and everybody make their decision. Yeah, that's right. But the reason why things like this has been hidden is because most of us came in up in a Western Eurocentric Christianity religion that have hid these things from us. And these uh, many of these seminaries and Bible schools and many of the urban apologists have followed through with an oppressor's doctrine that have kept our people blind. And it's time for black people, white people, Chinese people, all people to say, I just want to know the truth. I just want to know the truth. So don't try to hinder me from studying and reading and looking at dictionaries. Who are, who are the, the Afro-Asiatic people? What is this anti-Semitism? What is it really? What is it really? Let me study for myself. Everybody need to take a look at it. Don't hide nothing. Because if we hide things, we miss things. Just like for all these years, 65 years old, 40, going on 43 years in, in the ministry, and within the last several years, I've come through the power of the Most High revealing things to me and meeting other brothers and sisters realize there's going to be another exodus from what is called Egypt. And they're going to be another trip through the wilderness. And especially in our black churches, our pastors need to wake up and study and tell our people the truth. Because those people are going to find out one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, all right, number two. But when we carefully search the scriptures of the prophets, here is what we find. So, we're talking about the second exodus and the second wilderness trip, part two. And we're going to go through, through some more scriptures. I may touch on some of the ones I touched on last time I taught this lesson. But we're going to go through some other scriptures that's going to validate what we're talking about. Okay, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 16. And uh, we're going to look at verse 14. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 14 and verse 15. And I thank the Most High Father because, like I said, for the last week or so, I have literally been going through it in my body, but I'm just not getting over whatever I had. And, uh, and I thank the Most High for staying here today with my health and strength. Amen. So it's a blessing. Amen. 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 Okay, hallelujah. To the Father be the glory. Amen. A lot of the people uh, on social media was concerned too, and they've been sending me little shots out and everything. Okay, um, Jeremiah 16, verse 14 and 15. These scriptures are going to help validate this second exodus. It's going to be a second exodus and a second trip through the wilderness when Messiah is going to march the 12 tribes and those engrafted within them because they're going to come out a mixed multitude again, just like the first exit, Exodus. 
And he going to march them back into Jerusalem and into the promised land. That has not happened. So whoever is in the promised land now, you are ahead of time. You done got ahead of Messiah according to the book. Let's study for ourselves and not be tricked anymore. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 14 and 15. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said. Or that's the, that was my text. The, uh, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from the, all the lands whether he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave their fathers. Now let's go to Isaiah chapter 11 verse 10. And let's look at some more scripture that talks about this second exodus. When Messiah going to locate all 12 tribes. It is called the former and the latter rain, the last day harvest, the fruit of the earth. When he gathered them from every nation where they went into slavery and captivity, where they still scattered up until 2022. And he going to bring them all back. And he's going to bring those who have accepted Messiah and engrafted in among them and with them according to Romans eleven seventeen, And they're all going to follow Messiah through into the wilderness. And it, was be, it will be there in the wilderness that the marriage supper of the Lamb would take place. And he's going to make an everlasting covenant with all of the house of Israel. And everybody engrafted in is called marriage. Just like when he brought them out the first time and brought them to the mountain and Yah came down, spoke ten commandments, and it was those ten commandments became the marriage vows, and they said all that the Lord said we will do, they entered into marriage. He married Israel as a nation. Well, he going to do it again. Because what has been will be. Glory to God. He going to do it again. And so he going to literally have another ceremony, kind of like the one Moses had, and then Messiah going to take them into the promised land. Because the same way when they came out the first time, Moses brought them to the mountain. They entered in the covenant with the Most High. And you know they spent several uh, years out there. And then they, they, uh, they got ready to go into the promised land. And it took Joshua to bring them in because Moses died. But this time going to be the same way. It's going to be Messiah bringing us out the nations, bringing us to the wilderness, Having this marriage up of the Lamb, bringing us into the land. And it's coming out of mixed multitude again. And the mixed multitude are all those that have received the true Messiah, not white Jesus, okay. not Christianity, Eurocentric Christianity, but we're talking about the Christian in the Bible, talking about following Christ, followers of the way, those that have accepted the true Messiah in their heart to receive this spirit. They're going to be in that bunch because it's going to be a mixed multitude again. Just like when they came out the first time, it was a mixed multitude. Do anybody know who the mixed multitude was, the type of people that was in there? Go ahead. The first time when they broke, came out of Egypt the first time. Because um, they came out a mixed multitude. And I hear some of these urban apologists say, oh, it was a mixed multitude. Yeah, yeah, but do you know who that mixed multitude was? Go ahead. Hamites mm -hmm. and Israelites. Now, when you go to now, if anybody can go study the Bible and show me some Europeans that was in there, show it to me. I don't have nothing against Europeans, the descendants of Japheth, because later on we know that the Messiah planned a way that Japheth's descendants can, if they truly repent, can be engrafted in, because it was three sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. We know the Israelites came from Shem, and we now know that, that they were Negroes, yeah. okay, people of color, black people, okay? We know that the, the majority of the other Africans, darker people, came, came from Ham, and we know that the European nations came from Japheth, including the Ashkenazi Jewish people. They came from Japheth. It's said in the Bible. We got to deal with truth. We can't deal with error. We can't deal with lies and 
when somebody try to cover this up and try to blot all this stuff out of social media, maybe they're hiding something. The Ashkenazi are descendants of Goma who came from Jaffa. Okay, so if they claim that, well, we just Ashkenazi by name, but that's not who we are. Well, where did the real Ashkenazi go then? Did they fall off the planet? No, there is some Ashkenazi people who are de who descend from Japheth, according to Genesis chapter 10, verse 2 through 5, okay? And they are called Caucasians. They are called Europeans. And in our everyday term, white people, okay? We just teaching the truth. I done read my disclaimer. We just got to be real and be educated now because too many lies have been taught and told. Okay? And we know that the Shem, the Shem's descendants are the ones that Semitic. And we know that many of the uh, the uh, Hamites are Semitic because the Semitic people are Afro-Asiatic people, African-oriented people. And Ham and um, Shem was Afro-Asiatic people. So when you say Semitic, you're talking about African people. Okay? So let's get the record straight. Anyway, let me get back to my lesson. All right, let's look at uh, Isaiah 11, verse 10 again. Because I'm just throwing here. I don't know how I can go on that. I think I asked a question. And anybody else want to say something before I move on? Okay, let's keep going. All right, Isaiah 11, verse 10. And in that day, this is a day that's coming because we can't find no evidence this, these days have taken place. We can't find no evidence that nobody talks about the first exodus anymore. Everybody still teach and talk about the first exodus. But the Bible said it's coming a day when they won't even discuss that no more because everybody's going to be consumed and caught up with the second exodus. So we know that day hadn't come. So Isaiah eleven ten, And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people, to it shall the Gentiles seek. So the Gentiles have a door to come in. So the Father is good and loves people. He loves souls. And he has given everybody a chance. But if the Gentiles keep trying to lord it over everybody, cover up truth, and then try to uh, uh, crush down the truth, then they're not going to make it in. Gentiles being Europeans, Caucasian, whatever you want to call it from Genesis chapter 10, verse 2 through 5. If their ancestors, if your ancestors keep trying to hide the truth and change the truth, they're not going to make it into the kingdom because the Bible said, if any man add to or take from anything in this inspired document, their name shall be taken out of the Lamb's book of life. So many Gentiles have already lost their souls because they are the ones controlling the world they are the one controlling social media. They are the one controlling Hollywood. Amen. And they control everybody. So if you're trying to suppress the truth, well, you won't. The truth is you're not going to be in the kingdom. Okay. You're going to end up in the lake of fire. And there's a judgment coming of the, of the just and the unjust. And there's going to be a judgment unto the resurrection of life and a judgment of the resurrection of damnation. So if the Gentiles don't stop it, they're in control of the world. They're in control of all power now. But if they don't stop it, they won't make it. Okay. That's the book. And so this message is to warn all of us to embrace truth, learn truth, seek truth for yourself. Don't let nobody teach and lie to you. Glory to God. So, again, and in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, and shall, and which shall stand for an ensign of the people, and to it the Gentiles shall seek. There are going to be some Gentiles make it because they're going, to, they're going to come true with this stuff and stop trying to hide who the true Hebrews are. And his rest shall be glorious. Look at verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day, whenever that day come, that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time. If somebody said a second time. The second time. So we talk about the second exodus. And the second trip through the wilderness. This have to happen because it was spoken by the prophet. We know of no time when he took the 12 tribes of Israel back through the wilderness. Brought them out of uh, Egypt or a system called Egypt. Brought them back to the wilderness. 
and brought all 12 tribes back into the Holy Land, we don't even see a day like that. But the prophet said that day is coming. And so this got to be the second exodus, and it is, and it's the second trip through the wilderness. Because it says the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea, from sea to shining sea, from every planet, uh, I'm sorry, every nation on the planet, wherever the Israelites went into captivity according to Jesus' prophecy and slavery, he said he's going to bring them all back and the Gentiles going to lose their rule over them. And so the Gentiles is going to be your time to serve now because this is what the prophet said. But my point is we haven't seen this yet. We haven't seen nothing like that yet. Scholars can't, can't trace nothing like this. So we know this is the second exodus and the second uh, trip through the wilderness. Look at verse 12, Isaiah 11 verse 12. Some of y'all in here know this already, but I have to label because somebody might be watching and need this. Yes, Hallelujah. Okay, Isaiah 11, verse 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah. Judah was dispersed through slavery to the four corners of the earth. And Judah would not come back from the four corners of the earth until... Christ come in the sky and send his angels to get his elect, which is Judah. And then he's going to find all, all the rest of the ten tribes, and all ten tribes going to come back to the land of Israel and occupy that land again, all of them, and they're going to have to take another trip through the wilderness because Messiah is going to take them through the wilderness, and there are some things he got to do with them in the wilderness, just like Moses had to do. It's going to not going to be like the first time because the Bible said he's going to do a new thing in the wilderness this time. Mm -hmm. And I've already taught on that in, on the first uh, part of the lesson. So, and he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Judah and gather together the dispersed, I'm sorry, the outcast, uh, gather together the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And now here's a scripture reference, Deuteronomy 32, verse 20. When Moses was talking to the children of Israel before they went into the promised land, he told them that they're going to get over there and break his covenant. But God was going to ultimately put them out the land and scatter them into four corners. So here the prophecy spoke away over there in Deuteronomy 32, 20 about them being scattered into corners. And here's Isaiah the prophet's talking about when he bring them from those four corners that they were scattered in Isaiah 11, verse 12. Here's another scripture reference. I don't want to really dig too deep into it because it'll take me off my lesson. Here's another scripture reference, Matthew 24, verse 31, when he said he's going to take the four winds to retrieve Judah from the four corners of the earth, the place where they was uh, scattered through slavery. Matthew 24, 31, when, when the Lord come in the sky, he is literally talking about coming to retrieve Judah. So if Judah not going to be retrieved from the four corners of the earth until Messiah come in the sky, what in the world we got a group of people in 1948 going into the land of Israel claiming that they are Judah? Something wrong. We just asking questions. We not mad at nobody. We just said that somebody been lying. And we got to study the scriptures and we got to uh, investigate this stuff because somebody been lying. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So that's another reference, Matthew 24, 31. Then Revelation 7 verse 1, he talks about the four corners and the four winds. It was slave ships. And the wind assisted these slave ships to take Judah to every corner on the planet. Because many times they were using sails back then. But these four winds took the Israelites to every corner of the globe. Uh -huh. And they're still there. 
and they'll be there to the second return of Jesus Christ. And incidentally, the second return of Jesus Christ is the second exodus. Mm -hmm. Now, the theologians don't teach it like that, but this is a fact that the second return of Christ is the second exodus. Mm -hmm. or the rapture. And some of them call it the rapture, but Eurocentric Christianity lied about the rapture. That's why rapture can't even be found in the Bible. But the theory and the idea of what they, it means is found in the Bible. Because we're going to be all caught up in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. But when he catches up, he's going to take us to the wilderness and march us back into our land. Amen. With a mixed multitude, and that mixed multitude is everyone that have received Messiah and engrafted in among them and with him. That's what that is. But the Bible schools and teachers for all these decades did not explain this stuff right. Because I think someone was trying to hide some of this stuff. Because there's only one group of people on the planet in 2022 that was scattered at every nation on the planet through slave ships everywhere, never been paid reparations. Ain't but one group of people. And ain't but one. So no wonder why people trying to hide this stuff, this movie Hebrews the Negroes. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. And you better hurry up because they're trying to blot it out. So no, it's no wonder why they're trying to hide this stuff now. But it's too late because the toothpaste is already out the, 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 the tube. And you can't put it back in because the most I've been working several years before this stuff hit the fan. Amen. So you try, if you try to block that movie out, boycott uh, what it is, Amazon. If you try to uh, talk about it anti-Semitic, if we watch it and if we... if uh, what's that guy named that, uh, Kyrie Kyrie Irving just cause he sent a link for people to watch it and the whole world of, is mad now the Gentile world is all up in a uproar let us read it let us see for ourselves stop trying to hide it hey, cause we already know we already know hallelujah so uh, Revelation 7 verse 1 four corners four winds uh, uh, and then the uh, four corners of the earth, the Israelites went to slavery on slave ships all over the world. And then in Revelation, uh, the angels going to bring them back, all 12 tribes. And everybody has received Messiah. And he's going to bring them through the wilderness, second trip through the wilderness, into the promised land again. That's what the Bible teaches. But rapture made us think, oh, he's going to catch us up and we're going to heaven. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. Heaven's going to be on earth. The kingdom's going to be set up, set up on the earth. Amen. So it's been a lot of false teaching. All right, Revelation 6, verse 12 through 15 <laughs> also talks about that second uh, exodus because when he come and gather all 12 tribes, select 144,000 from each tribe of Israel, uh, then the wrath of God gonna come on the earth and the nations and all these peoples that's that's um, that's hating on these black celebrities and I, shame on these celebrities for listening to slave math, master and crawfishing and backing up. Now let me just say this since I'm on uh, Facebook, I don't know if y'all heard about this or not. How many of y'all know Sha Shaquille O'Neal? Mm -hmm. Everybody know Shaquille O'Neal. Have y'all heard the recent stuff that just happened with him? Okay, call him Shaq. We're going uh, uh, we get ready to go on cruise tomorrow, so we, I hope we still see him on the cruise because he's an announcer on the cruise, right? A, a rep. On what? He's a rep. He's a rep. But he sat on, and let me tell y'all something. There's people behind the scene making these black people get up and talk about other black people. Don't be fooled. Okay? Now, I am not coming down on my black brothers and sisters. I love them all because they are Semitic people. They are the Hebrews, all right? But it's sad that they make us fight each other and they make us talk down each other. Shaquille O'Neal last week sat with three or four other black, prominent black people and called Kyrie, give me his last name again, Irving, an idiot. Did y'all see this? 
call him an idiot on national television for him sending a link telling people to watch Hebrews the Negro. Shaq called him an idiot. Well, a couple of hours ago and a day ago, we just found out that Shaquille O'Neal owned a theater, I think in New Jersey, and several years ago, he played the movie in his theater and just called another black man an idiot for just sending the link out for people to watch it, and you had it in your movie theater. So now, I think we need to call everybody out. Let's stop this fighting. Let's stop let the Gentiles make us fight each other, and let's stand with each other. Let's study. Black churches, study for yourself. I'm glad we've been studying the last several years before all this stuff hit the fan. This, it ain't going nowhere, y'all. It ain't going nowhere, so we can't stick our head in the sand and play like this stuff ain't going on. It's going it to intensify. But I'm glad God put, gave us a head start on it all. But the bottom line is, we as black leaders, black pastors, and then there's black pastors. I'm one black pastor, well-known black pastor. He got on his network, big network, and he said, all black peoples are Hamites. Stop trying to be Jews. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life because you're not studying, sir. All black peoples are not Hamites. Glory to God. That's Hamites and Shemites. All of them was black people. Shem was known as the Negro. Hallelujah. So there's black people fighting each other, calling each other idiots. But let me share something with y'all. There's someone behind the scene pulling the strings that got us divided and talking about each other. Let's stop and let's just study. Let's just read. Let's just watch the movie for yourself and make your own conclusion. Now, whatever conclusion you come up with, that's your business. Mm -hmm. But if you've got the nerve to call one black man an idiot for sending out a link for other people to see it, but you in your theater a few years ago played it. So who's the idiot? So now, why am I bringing this up? We got to call out folly among us. And we've always been people to fight each other. That's why James, James chapter 1, verse 1, to the 12 tribes that are scattered. James chapter 4, James asked him, why y'all have all this fighting among y'all selves? Then James began to tell us why we fight so much. And if you read James, he'll tell you. He's talking to the 12 tribes. But now it's time to stop fighting and start reading. Yes. Now it's time to stop fighting and start studying. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to stop fighting and let the Bible be the guide. Amen. Because everything Ron Dawson was talking about as far as who the people are is in this book. Right. Is in this Bible. And I stand with it. Amen. Amen. So if I go off Facebook, y'all going to know why. <laughs> if I go off YouTube, y'all going to know why. But I'm still going to teach it because we've been teaching this a long time. And saints, it done hit the fan. Amen. Hallelujah. So ain't no use getting tired of wanting to hear about it now, but you're going to keep hearing about it. But it's bring. Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. I came to bring division. People are going to have to take sides in this hour we're living in. Because this Bible coming alive. But anyway, uh, let me jump on down. I'm talking a little bit about the second exodus. The second exodus is the second return of Christ. The second exodus is when he sent his angels in the sky and get them from all the nations. He's going to uh, get all of the Israelites from every day waking up now, realizing who they are. The Bible said in the last days they will have an awakening. So that's why we're in a revival. That's why we're in a restitution. That's why we're waking up. But the second exodus is the second return of Christ. When he get all of us, we go to the wilderness. And while we in the wilderness, under the shadow of the Almighty, he's protected us, all hell going to break loose on the Gentiles that deceived us. Mm. Any Gentiles that truly repent and become truly sorry, and especially if you stand up and speak up now, because if you're not going to stand up for Israel now, you ain't going to stand up for us in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. So while he got the Israelites and all those engrafted in the mixed multitude in the wilderness for three and a half years, wrath of God is on the nation. Do y'all know they got rivers drying up now? 
You done heard about it, Tammy? Talk a little bit about what you've heard. I've just heard people say it. I don't know too much about it because I haven't really went into it. They done showed it, but all of this was prophesied in the Bible. They said the great river Euphrates in the book, in the in the, in the scripture said it was going to dry up. Y'all know it's drying up? Mm -hmm. And the Bible said there's devils uh, are in that's under there and people now hearing voices that they never heard now. They had somebody with a camera and they was hearing some type of weird voice well, the river Euphrates had dried up, and the Bible talks about these spirits that's going to be released in the last day. We in these days. So we can't be playing like we don't know what's going on, y'all. <laughs> you got to stay. Man, I'm, man, we in some exciting days. I, I think they're excited myself. But everything we've taught about happening right for our eyes. So rivers are drying up. Nations are fighting. The Gentiles fighting each other. Talking about nuclear war, it's going to get worse because they have messed the world up. Their way out now is to accept the truth that they've been trying to hide and accept the true Messiah that can save them, not only us, but them. But if they don't, we're going to be in the wilderness three and a half years and the wrath of God is poured out on the nation. That's when the Bible said these uh, locusts are going to bite men and the stain going to last for six months. Or five months, something like that. And they're going to try to seek death and can't die. The Bible said that spirits will be released from the bottomless pit. The Bible talks about all the stuff you see in the book of Revelation that's horrible, even the mark of the beast, happens after the bride goes to the wilderness. That's the second trip to the wilderness. Amen. And the second exodus that is not intended for the bride. Bible says in our first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 9, we are not appointed unto wrath. They told us the Gentile church is going to get raptured, then Israel going to stay here, go through the mark of the beast and wake up. No, 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 no. The bride is the house of Israel when everyone else grafted in. There ain't but one assembly. Amen. All these 32,000, 40,000 churches do not belong to Messiah. Yeah. This, this, this was man's doing. All right, so let me go a little further. Any questions or comments on that? All right, so let's keep going. I think I need the air on. I'm getting a little warm up here. Hallelujah. Okay, now, I'm going to skip over this part of the lesson because I want to wrap it up in a little bit here. The tribulation versus the great tribulation. I don't know if y'all remember, but I have taught on this before. And there's a lot of misconception on the Tribulation and the great tribulation. All right? Now, some people still teach you we still got to go through the great tribulation. The great tribulation has already happened to Israel. We still in tribulation. Amen? And until Messiah come and get us out of this, we still in tribulation. But he said that there shall be great tribulations such as the world has never seen. That was, he was talking to the Israelites. Yeah. And the Israelite people, when they when the temple was destroyed, they went into slavery years later, scattered in all the earth, was killed by the sword, eaten by alligators, uh, aborted, abortion was started, the nations of the world took our identity, Great Britain took our identity and claimed they from the line of David. America killed thousands of Israelites, and then they just tried to say we Hamites. That was the great tribulation for Israel. But now Israel have, have come alive, the dry bones and woke up. We are not going through the great tribulation. We've been through the great tribulation. We're coming out of tribulation now. Because he said, except when the tribulation, great tribulation started, he said, except those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. In other words, not one Israelite, not one black person would still be alive unless God would have changed some things and shortened those days. So that's why you got laws that certain things they can't do to us no more. So all these theologians talking about the great tribulations to come in the book of Revelation. I'm sorry. Y'all need to read your Bible again. It ain't so. What's coming is the wrath of God. And the wrath of God started at the sixth seal in the book of Revelation, chapter 6. Let me give you the verses. Starting at verse 
Starting around about verse 12 down to verse 15. When the sixth seal is open, that sets off the wrath of God, not the great tribulation. Revelation chapter 6, start at verse 12 and verse down to verse 15. Now, I know that's going to mess up a lot of people's theology, but I'd rather have the truth. And the, and the wrath of God from the sixth seal, all the way, all that stuff in the book of Revelation that's going to come up against the world and the nations, that's against the Gentile nations that have killed Israel hated Israel, and drunk on the blood of the saints. That's what that is. Hallelujah. And so, I did some teaching on that on YouTube. This is all I'm going to say about that. I will give you Daniel chapter 11, verse 31, and Daniel 11, verse 33. Because the Bible says that after the abomination of desolation, happened in the temple and the, and the sacrifice would cease and the temple would be destroyed that that was going to usher in the great tribulation for Israel. That has already happened. And then he said that Israel was going to be scattered and fall by the end of the sword many days and I believe that was the 400 year prophecy of uh, uh, Abraham. So Daniel talks about that. Those things have already happened. What is on the horizon now is the awakening of the true Hebrews, the restitution of it according to Peter chapter 3, and a revival we're in, some people calling it an awakening. The only other thing on the agenda is the coming of Messiah to snatch the 12 tribes and those who grafted in out of all the nations, which is the second exodus, and a trip through the wilderness, then the wrath of God and the revelation will be happening to all the nations. That's where we are. Okay? So I don't want to labor too much there, but I can prove it. And I have proved that. Okay? Now let's talk a little bit about the second wilderness trip a little bit more. My first message two Sabbaths ago was the second exodus and the second trip to the wilderness, the second wilderness, part one. I'm doing the second exodus and the second wilderness, part two. So I'm just kind of going over it again, adding a little bit more context and scripture to it. So as I try to wrap all of this up, let me talk a little bit more and show some more scriptures regarding the second wilderness. There is gonna be a second exodus and a second trip through the wilderness. And Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, a.k.a. Jesus the Christ, is the one that's going to march us through the wilderness Amen. and bring us into the promised land. Amen. And that three and a half years when we end the wilderness is when he make everybody enter the bond of the covenant. That's marriage. That's called the marriage supper of the Lamb. And I know I used to teach the marriage supper of the Lamb, when Jesus said, I, I'm not, I'm going to drink of this cup now, but I'm not going to drink of it anymore until we do it anew in our Father's kingdom. The kingdom is going to be in the wilderness, not in the sky. We caught up with him in the sky, but he brings us to the wilderness. And the wilderness will be looking like Eden at this time. I'm a, if, I don't get a, if I get a chance for I close, tell me if you remind me, if I forget, I'm going to show you a scripture. See, when people hear wilderness, they don't understand that there's prophecies that he said he's going to do a new thing in the wilderness. This wilderness trip is going to be to the trip to the Garden of Eden. The wilderness is going to be turned into Eden. It's not going to be a wilderness that you think in your mind. It's going to be decked out because it's going to be a wedding in the wilderness. And anybody that don't want to go through the second trip in the wilderness... You said, I don't want to go to the marriage supper. Because that's where it's going to be held there. Amen. All right, so second wilderness. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Jeremiah 31, verse 22. <clears throat> Jeremiah 31, verse 22. How long will thou go, O back, uh, old thou backslidden daughter? For the Lord has created a new thing. He's talking about this new thing 
that he's going to do in his second trip through the wilderness. And he's talking to this backslidden bride called Israel that had uh, forsaken his law, statutes, and commandments and was scattered through slavery everywhere and dispersed everywhere. And now he done brought her into the wilderness and, he's, and, and he, they're not going to be backslidden anymore. So he said, how long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. It ain't going to be in heaven. In the earth, a woman shall compass a man. Just like Moses in the first exodus brought the children of Israel to the mountain and made a covenant with Almighty Yah and in the wilderness there was a there was a tabernacle and all of the children of Israel surrounded that tabernacle and it was in the form of a cross. Well again this new thing when he bring the children of Israel back to the wilderness in this second exodus second wilderness trip they're going to surround him again. Every, it's every, what has been will be. Nothing new under the sun. This is going to be a new way he do it this time. The bride going to surround the most high in the wilderness again when he come back in the second return, second exodus. So he said, a woman shall compass a man. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as yet, they shall use this speech in the land of Judah and in the cities. Oh, verse 23. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Just let me start over. As yet, they shall use this speech in the land of Judah and in the cities thereof. What speech? When I shall bring again their captivity. In other words, they're going to talk about this when? When the second exodus occurred. When he bring them from their captivity. When he get them out of all the nations. The Lord going to come in the sky. The sun going to be darkened. Moon not going to give a light. Stars going to fall from heaven. He going to send his angels. Gather the, uh, uh, the dispersed of Judah from the four corners. Gather everybody that belonged to him. And take them to the wilderness. This is when this happened. So let's look at it again. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the Lord, the God of Israel, as yet they shall use this speech in the land of Judah and the cities, because he's going to bring them back into the cities after he bring, march them out of the wilderness. Thereof, when I shall bring again their captivity. This ain't going to happen until he bring us out of captivity. The Lord bless thee. O oh, habitation of justice. In other words, when he take them out of their wilderness, bring them back into the land, it's going to be a city of justice. It's going to be a holy habitation. Amen. Is there a holy habitation in the Middle East now? Is it a city of justice over there now? They just had one of the largest gay parades in the world. They set the largest skin cancer death in the world over there sucking blood. Suck it. Let me, let me, Jessica might not like that one. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I better not go there. <clears throat> Y'all pray for me. Amen. I'm healed. But anyway, my point is in the second exodus and the second trip to the wilderness, when the true Israelites, all 12 tribes, get back in the land, it's going to be called a habitation of justice. And my point is. The Middle East, ever since 1948 up until today, ain't no habitation of justice. That's my point. So somebody needs to start reading and studying and see what's been going on in this world. Why this stuff been hid from us? Why they don't want us to watch Hebrews the Negroes? Why they trying to silence all of us? Because they don't want our people to wake up. Because if we wake up, we're going to find out somebody been lying to us. So it's going to be the Lord bless the old habitation of justice and the mountain of holiness. Israel ain't no mountain of holiness now, but that day coming. This is what the prophets are talking about. All right? Now, 
Revelation 12, 14, when he take the uh, bride to the wilderness, it said, and the woman uh, were given two wings of a great eagle and she that she should fly into the wilderness. That's when the Most High sent his angels to take us to the wilderness. That's what he's talking about there. Then when we get there, that woman going to surround that man. That's what the scripture was saying. Did I read that up here somewhere? Yeah. It says, how long will thou go about, O backsliding daughter? For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. That's what he's talking about. When this woman, who is Israel, is taken to the wilderness, this woman going to surround this man called Christ. Mm. Why? Because it's going to be a marriage. All right, let's go to Isaiah 43. I'm trying to hurry up here. Judy got to get her hair done. <laughs> the, it's amazing that we've trusted scholars, urban apologists, Eurocentric Christianity to teach us this Bible, and they've been lying to us. And now, you know that old saying I heard, I, uh, and I don't support what these celebrities are into. I don't support the system that they support. I don't support uh, Kanye's music, but they are speaking some truth about what they're saying about who the Hebrews are. Okay? Now, uh, so I don't support all that stuff even though I bring their names up. I support them because they are people, and I pray that they can stand their ground and stop backing up and being sissies. Because just because you back up and get billions of dollars and stay on your team and stay in this system just because you deny the truth of who we are don't mean a hill of beans because the, the Bible says if you deny me before men, I'm going to deny you before my father. So we live in a time now where you're going to either stand for something or you're going to fall for everything. I thank God for Muhammad Ali when he was living. When Muhammad Ali stood up and would not go to fight in Vietnam. Right. And they did the same thing to Muhammad Ali that they're doing to these athletes now. And Muhammad Ali stood his ground. Huh? He went to jail. And went to jail for it. And they boycotted him and they took everything from him. Wouldn't let him fight for nearly three years. Muhammad Ali weathered the storm. We need some more black celebrities to weather the storm or you're going to sell us all out. Yeah. Hallelujah. And <clears throat> we need some black preachers. Yeah, they may start censoring us more. This message ain't going to be popular. But no matter what comes down on me, I'd rather stand for something than to fall for anything. Yeah. And guess what? We're in a time where no believer is going to get away now. Because some believers just don't like conflict. I don't either. But this world is in conflict. And it's going to intensify. And at some point, you're going to have to take sides. I'm on the Lord's side. I'm letting it be known right now. I'm not on Kanye's side. I'm not on any celebrity side. I'm on the side of truth. And when they speak truth, I stand with them. When they back down, I ain't with you. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 43. Verse 18. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I would do a new thing in the will, in, I would do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness. This is the second trip to the wilderness. When Messiah come and retrieve us in the second exit, it's called the second return. And at this time, it's going to be a new thing in the wilderness. The wilderness ain't going to look like no wilderness. That's what's got some people tripping. Wilderness is going to be Eden, the Garden of Eden again. I'm going to show you a scripture in a minute. Come on. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field shall not shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, uh, because I give water to the wilderness. It's talking about the wilderness. This is second wilderness trip. And rivers in the desert, and give drink to my people, my chosen. He's talking about Israel. All these urban apologists, 
out here that don't like us teaching about Israel, you done missed this last day reviving move of God. Because this is about Israel. Now everybody can be included. You can be engrafted in. But this is not about the church. The 32,000, 40,000 churches, denomination, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, uh, Catholic church, Protestant churches, the Nicene Council. It ain't, the Bible don't even talk about that stuff. That's baloney. This is his chosen. This is his assembly. This is the true body of Christ, the true church, with everyone else engrafted in, if you want to. All right? It says, Isaiah 43, verse 21. This people have I formed for myself and shall show forth my praise. Israel, this is the assembly I chose for myself. This is the only thing I started. He said, many in that day going to say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not do in your name do many marvelous work? He going to say, depart from me. I never knew you denominations. I never knew your, your, your Protestant churches. I never knew the Catholic Church. I never knew uh, the Nicene Council in you, what y'all call the church fathers. I don't know them. Israel only have I known. Amen. So if you ain't in this fold, you in the fold that's going to the lake of fire. Wow. Ezekiel chapter 36. What am I doing now? I'm reading some scriptures that validate the second wilderness. I started out reading scriptures that validated the second exodus, which is the second coming of Christ, second return of Christ. These scriptures validate the second trip to the wilderness and what's going to happen. Ezekiel 36 verse uh, 33. Thus said the Lord God, in the day, it's the day that's coming, that I shall cleanse you from all your iniquities. He's talking about Israel. He's going to clean us up, y'all. Let me tell y'all something. I can show you some scriptures to prove to you that black people are going to fight each other all the way to the end. Now, I would like to say that that ain't true, but yeah. there's, there's scriptures that say that black people are not going to stop selling each other out. They, a bunch of them ain't going to stop cussing each other out. A bunch of them ain't going to stop. But the Bible said that Christ had a covenant to come back and he's going to cleanse that from us. And he said that that uh, Ephraim ain't going to have strife and division with Judah anymore. He said he's going to take all of that from us. So I hate to see black people fighting against each other. And I hate to see them allowing the ish people to make us fight each other. But it's going to happen to Christ come. So don't let it move you. But we got to call it out and address it as we see it. And we still got to love each other because we still just stop. We people. They are people. And even though they, they train us to be against each other, well, we're going to be against each other predominantly until Christ come and he's going to heal us from this and that will never happen again with us. Okay? So he said, in that day, in the day that I have... I, I shall uh, have cleansed you. You're going to clean us from all of the stuff that bother us. From all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in, in the cities. And the waste shall be built. Ain't going to be no third temple that God endorses. Now, if the Ish people want to build a temple, that's on them. The third temple will not be built until Christ comes. With his own people. I got other scriptures to go to. I don't want to get off my lesson now. Mm -hmm. And the desolate land shall be tilled. Because see, there's the little the little slip of land that you look at now, they call Middle East, the Middle East with the welling wall and all that stuff. That's just a part of Israel. Israel's so huge. That's so much land that is unoccupied. Do y'all know they got black people over there that left America when they found out there was Israel? And they're over there now, and Israel would not let them uh, be a part, and they had to put these people in the desert. And we just looked at a document. Those people in a desert done built a paradise, and they don't want to show it to you. Yeah, people right now, black people that went back to Israel, they wanted to deport them, and probably about six or seven months ago, we, we talked about that. Uh, it was all over the news where they wanted to get these people out of here. And these were black people, Israelites. But they kind of got it on the hush-hush now. 
and they're not talking about it too much, but them same people that they put in the desert, now they let all the other white people come all the way in from everywhere else, but they kept these black people in the desert and these people that built a paradise in the desert. Y'all didn't know that? Wow. Yeah. Okay, let me keep going. <clears throat> these are the days we in. We can either shut our eyes and play like we don't know nothing, but I'm, I promise you, it's all around us. And it's going to intensify. Okay? What verse did I stop on? What, what verse? 34? And the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. So there's a lot of desolate land in, this, in the land of Israel right now, but it's all going to be built up Amen. when Messiah take us all back in. Okay? And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden. It's going to be the Garden. It ain't going to be no wilderness, y'all. It's going it's to be a wilderness, but he's going to do a new thing in the wilderness. And when he do this new thing in the wilderness, the wilderness and Israel are going to look like the Garden of Eden again. Is it looking like that now? So there's got to be a prophecy to come. Hallelujah. And the waste and the desolate and the ruined cities are become fenced and inhabited. Then the heathens that left round about you shall know that I, the Lord God, build the rain, the rains, places, the, the ruined places. The Lord going to build it with his people, not some People in the Middle East building a third temple, waiting on an Antichrist to come to stop the abomination of desolation. That stuff doesn't happen. They tricked us. And you tricked if you still believe that stuff. All right. And plant that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it. I will do it. Ain't nobody going to build him no temple. He going to do it. We've been lied to. All right, Ezekiel 20, verse 37. All this stuff happens in the second exodus, second wilderness. Ezekiel 20, verse 37. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. It's going to be a judgment seat of Christ. We're going to be judged before we enter into marriage. We're going to be judged before we go back into the land. Anybody going, Messiah march back in there, they marching back in right. That's right. Because it's going to be called a habitation of justice. It's going to be called the mountains of holiness. And we ain't got a land on the planet till this day that's called the mountains of holiness. Where the Lord built his house in the mountains. That ain't nowhere in the earth, but it's coming. At the second exodus, second return, second wilderness trip. So we got to go through a judgment, all of us. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. And I will bring you into the barn of the covenant. See, that's marriage. You've got to go to the wilderness, which is going to be the Garden of Eden at this time. going to be looking like the Garden of Eden at this time. You've got to go there to go to the marriage, except for the Lamb. Amen. So if you don't want to go, well, stay here. <laughs> Where the wrath of God being poured out. It says that, and then, now, he said, I will purge from among you the rebels. Ezekiel 20, verse 38. All this got to happen. I will purge from... From out from among you, the rebels. There's still some rebels in Israel. There's still some black people selling each other out. They don't get it straight. You gonna get out. Come on, come on. I'll get this I will purge out from among you the rebels, and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the countries. He's gonna be faithful to bring all Israel out of the countries where he scattered them through slavery. But a bunch of them gonna get to the wilderness and still go to the lake of fire. Because he said, I will bring them. That's when the Bible said in Romans chapter 11, all Israel shall be saved. All of them are going to be saved from the nations. But when he get to the wilderness, he's going to clean house Amen. with the rebels. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. And them that transgress against me, I will bring them forth out of the countries where they sojourn. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel. So it ain't nobody going back into the land of Israel till you pass under the rod and through the marriage where you do the bond of the covenant. Did 1948 go through the wilderness? 
Did Jesus show up over there and bring them into the bond of the covenant and march them back in Jerusalem? That was the bowful declaration that put them over there taking folks' land and killing them. Okay. This second exit is Jesus going to do it. Jesus didn't show up in 1948. If so, we missed it. <laughs> this is the stuff they're trying to hide from us. This is some of the elements that's in Hebrews to Negroes. That they want to balk out and want to bind everybody from watching now. Because it's revealing the true and the false. And that's why they don't want us to see this stuff. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel 36 verse 1. I'm just about done. Judy, you'll be getting your hair done in a few minutes. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Judy business all out there. <laughs> Amen. And plus, we're going to be on a ship tomorrow, so I got to get it all out of me. <laughs> Ezekiel 36. Elder, I came here last, last Sabbath, and I stood up to teach, and I almost fell off. I was so weak, and oh, I just had to leave. I'm sure they told y'all, Lord, I thought I wasn't going to make it this week, but I made it. Amen. 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 Father be the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 36, verse 1. The lesson is entitled, The Second Exodus, The Second Wilderness, Part 2. When did the church teach us about this? They hid this stuff. And many black pastors don't even know about this. Now, I ain't saying that to make you look bad, but your people ought to know that you need to teach on this. You need to tell the people the truth. And if you don't know it, go study it. Before you start saying this stuff ain't true. This ain't Bible. This is in your Bible too. And young people finding this stuff out. And that's why they running from this Christianity, this Western Christianity stuff now because it has lied to us and it has been nothing but white supremacy. I read my disclaimer. Y'all know I love people so you know I'm not hating on anybody but I got to tell the truth. Okay? Ezekiel 36, verse 1. Also, thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, you mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. He's prophesying to the land now, the mountains of Israel. Thus said the Lord God, because the enemy has said against you, aha, they laughing at you. Even the ancient high places are our possessions. In other words, the enemy took the possession from Israel and said, aha, they're laughing at you. They done took all the high places, but now God's prophesying it's going to be built again with my same people. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, what verse am I on? Get to the side. Three. Three. Thirty-three? Three. Oh, three. Therefore prophesy and say, thus saith the Lord God, because they have made you desolate. They took it from you. They destroyed it. It's a land now that uh, killed ab abortion also over there. Hmm. Gay parades over there. They took your land. It's supposed to be a mountain of holiness. But God said, I'm going to clean Israel up again. I'm going to clean that land again. It says, therefore prophesy and say, thus saith the Lord God, because they have made made uh, you desolate. They made you desolate and the land and swallowed you up on every side that you might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen. We belong to America. They, we still slaves. Amen. We've been free, but we ain't free. These celebrities are nothing but high class slaves because they're doing everything those ish people tell them to do and they got us fighting each other, killing each other, all of this rap music. These ish peoples are behind it, got us killing each other. So we steal their possession until Christ comes. Amen. And ye are taken up in the lips and talkers and are in the infamy, in, how you pronounce that, huh? Infamy. infamy of the people. Therefore, you mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God, the mountains to the mountain and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys, to the desolate waste, waste, and to the cities, 
that are forsaken. He's prophesying to the people and the land, if you, if you get what this prophet is doing. Which became a prey and a derision to the residue of the heathens and to all uh, and and to the heathen that are round about. Look at verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen. This is judgment he's speaking on the heathen. This is why this truth is coming out now. He said, and against Idumia, it is Esau behind this stuff. Esau mixed with the Romans and Esau mixed with some of these ish people and Esau is in and in on this deal. All right. Psalms 83. A bunch of other nations in on this. It said, and they, they in on it and they, they made us a prey. They made the land a prey. They laugh at the fact that they took the possession from Israel. Yes. It says, prophesy concerning no, I do me. I'm gonna stop right there. And it gets I do me. That's that's really Esau, isn't that right, huh? Which have appointed my land into their possession. What is he saying? These people took over the land of Israel, appointed it into their own possession. They got it and calling themselves Israel. Got America and all the nations spending billions to stand with Israel and then stepped on Israel, hated Israel, and now Israel waking up all in the nations. And the most high with this prophecy here is prophesying their doom. And he said, he said, uh, which have appointed my land into their hands. They took it. With the joy of all their heart. Oh, they have, oh, they're getting billions. They own everything, but just wait. Right. Which despiteful mind mm -hmm. to cast it out for a prey. Prophesied therefore concerning the land of Israel that y'all call the Middle East and say unto the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys, thus said the Lord God, behold, I have spoken in my jealousy. I'm jealous over my land. I'm jealous over my people. And I'm coming back in fury. All right. That's what the prophet's talking about, y'all. Right. And it goes on to say, and in my fury, because you have borne the shame of the heathens. Mm -hmm. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will lift my eyes. I'm sorry, I will lift my hand. Surely the heathens that are about you they shall be, they shall bear their shame. Every one of them gonna be shamed when the most high get through with them. Mm -hmm. And when for oh, what they yeah. did to his people right. and for what they did to his land. Amen. I want to close with these scriptures. You got some? I'm just gonna say that's why we say all we have to do is wait. Just wait. Just wait. Amen. Just wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Hallelujah. Vengeance yeah. is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Amen. I am not hating on no soul because a soul can repent just like Saul repented Hallelujah. for all the stuff he did. Uh -huh. So I'm not going to pronounce judgment on nobody. I just know my, the Messiah going to judge everybody. And if you're on the right side of Messiah, just wait. Just be patient. Then you ain't got to go around cussing nobody out. You ain't got to go around making nobody kiss your feet and hating well, everybody. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repent. Amen. But messages like this got to be taught, got to be explained, Hallelujah. because the truth got to come out at some point. Okay. Amen. Let me close with Jeremiah 30, verse 1. Starting with verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel said, write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people. That's the second exodus. Also called the second return of Christ. That's what the second ex exodus is. When I bring again the captivity of my people, talking about the people that was carried captive into slavery all over the world. Ain't but one group of people fit this. Israel and Judah, Israel and Judah, that's all 12 tribes. Ain't no such thing as bringing one tribe back in 1948 and the rest of them lost. Mm -mm. It says, Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave 
their fathers and they shall possess it. This is after they, he, they come out of the wilderness, after the going through the rod, getting the rebels from among us, after the, the wedding feast, after the bond of the covenant. Christ, the Savior, just like Joshua marked the people, marched the peoples in the promised land, Christ going to march them back in that land. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they're going to possess it. Jeremiah 30, verse 4. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah, all 12 tribes. For thus said the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling. Now, this is, this is talking about the, uh, the wrath of God. When the bride is taken to the wilderness from Revelation chapter 7, starting with Revelation 6, uh, verse 12 through 15, in the, at the last sixth seal, at the sixth seal, not the last seal. And then and in Revelation chapter 7, when he marked the 144,000 from all tribes, and then he take the rest of them to the wilderness, and anyone believing the Messiah grafted in, that's going to be a time of trembling. It's going to be a day like ain't never seen. Nobody has ever seen a day like this before. It's called the day of the Lord. So this is what the prophet is talking about. But thus said the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling and of fear and not of peace. It ain't going to be no peace. Everybody going to be fe I saw this day before I got saved. I was a lost and I had a dream where the moon was dripping blood. I ain't even know nothing about that was in the Bible. And uh, I was I was kind of running in games and stuff, and I had this dream one night. I saw the moon; it was so low, it was so huge, it had turned the blood and dripping blood on the earth. Darkness was had covered everything. I was so fearful because people were just stabbing each other and shooting each other. And it's right here; it's in the Bible. It was described in the Bible, and that's what led me to be saved. Amen. I got so scared, man. I started going. I went through all kinds of churches to find God. Mm. And finally, found him out leaving the church, wow. March the 4th, 1980. But I saw this right here. It says, we have heard a voice of trembling and of fear and not of peace. As you, as ye now, and see whether a man do it travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman travailing, and their faces are turned into paleness. I remember wow. on one of these platforms, Somebody was saying, well, what was the prophet seeing all these people turning pale? I thought, I thought Israel was black. But how, how, how black people going to turn pale? These are Gentiles turning pale. Yeah, this is the, in the day of wrath that starts in the seventh seal in Revelation, the Gentile powers that's controlling the world going to start turning pale because there's going to be a day they ain't never seen because that's called the wrath of God, the day of his vengeance. These are Gentiles turning pale because the people of God gone to the wilderness. Hallelujah. I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail. Just like a woman is in travail, now the whole earth these nations that done ruled us and killed us and hated us, now they turn in pale because this day doesn't come. And all faces are turned into paleness. It says, alas, for that day, talking about that day of uh, calamity, the, uh, everything in the book of Revelation, that's horrible, this is that day he's talking about. Mm -hmm. It says, alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. Ain't going to never be a day like it. It's the day of the Lord. And it's the day of his vengeance when he come to pay everybody back for what they did to his chosen people. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble is not Jacob going through trouble. Jacob's trouble is the trouble that, that the people that troubled Jacob. Because the Bible said Jacob and his descendant, but he shall be saved out of it. He's not going through the wrath of God. He's coming out. He had already been through the great tribulation and then already been through tribulations at this time. Jeremiah 30, verse 10 and verse 11. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob. So you ain't got nothing to fear, Jacob, or Israelite. You ain't going through this, even though the Gentiles got a bunch of us still believing that foolishness. Mm. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save you from afar. Talking about bringing them out of the nations, all from the four corners of the earth. That's, that's the second exit, the second return. And thy seed from the land of thy captivity, all the descendants of slaves in the land of their captivity, such as America. America still got slaves they ain't never paid and treated right. 
But America is going to be judged at this time, this time, along with all the other nations. And Jacob shall return and shall be at rest. Jacob is going to be at rest Amen. and be quiet. And none shall make them afraid. That ain't happened to the Jewish people in 1948. It ain't going to happen to them because they ain't the people. I'm sorry. Go study for yourself. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing anti-Semitic about telling the truth. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For I am with thee, said the Lord, to save thee. Though I make a full end of all nations. At that time when they're in the wilderness, he's making an end of all the nations because the wrath of God has come. The uh, locusts is the stinging people. The antichrist making them take uh, marks on their head and their and the, on their right hand and all that stuff you see in Revelation is happening while we in the wilderness. Yeah. In paradise. Marrying and surrounding yeah. our Savior. Yeah. I make a full end of all nations. Whether I scattered you, all these nations I scattered thee in, yet will I not make a full end of thee. Yeah. But I will correct thee in measure. And he has already done that. Because at this time we are out of it. And I will even have the all together, I will not leave the altogether unpunished. We have been punished for what we did as a people. That's why we're so divided, still hating each other, still calling each other idiots and doing the same thing. Yeah. Got the nerve to call another black person an idiot, and you just did the same thing. What a shame and how confused, but Father coming to heal it all. Amen. 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 Any questions or comments? To, Title is the second exodus and the second wilderness, part two. That's what the Bible teaches. Comments, questions. Hallelujah. Any notes? Anybody taking any notes that they want to let me hear your notes before I get off the internet? Hallelujah. Oh, choir, I must be in a Presbyterian church. <laughs> Amen. We don't believe in denominations. I just want to get some notes before we close. Let me know I made the journey. But did I say anything that helped anybody? Hallelujah. Maybe y'all need to write something on uh, Facebook. The other got some. I know the other was going to come through. Uh, any questions or comments on Facebook, please write them down. I'll get back with you. Uh, and on YouTube later on tonight. And I want to say to those on Facebook, please take some time and go to YouTube. Under Apostle Curtis Lewis, I spell Lewis L O U I S, and I need at least 13 more subscribers. Go hit the little red button and subscribe on YouTube under Apostle Curtis Lewis. And so, please go to YouTube and subscribe. I would appreciate it. Okay, Elder, I just want to hear some of y'all thoughts before I close or comments. Thought it was a good message uh, in regards to the second Exodus. The Israelites, and I, I love the part where you also said too. Uh, well, this was on a prior prior uh, teaching about how the house of Israel is not your denomination, mm -mm. and that you know uh, it's only going to be one one. Just fold. one assembly, and that's the house of Israel. That's the only thing. That's the only assembly he knows. Yeah, and he, yeah, he had nothing to do with no other organization, no other denomination. And I always say that I'm not saying uh, y'all don't have any people sitting in those denominations. His people sitting everywhere. And, uh, and they're serving wood and stone everywhere. But they're waking up coming out of this foolishness now. And these Gentile nations and Martin Luther and uh, uh, the Catholic Church, Constantine, uh, the Nicene Council, that is, that's foolishness. They are not the true church fathers. When the Nicene Council sat down to determine the Christian doctrine, they had punished and put out all the Hebrews at that time. And it was nothing but Europeans sitting there calling themselves the church fathers. So all that stuff is foolishness. And all of us that's following these men, you're not following the true Hebraic Bible. You're following a Bible that's been handed down in a mindset taught by Europeans. And the Europeans need to repent for the evils that they have done and taking people laying and lying. And if perhaps God grants you repentance that you make it back in. So you're going to straighten this mess up. But go ahead, Elder. I know I was just thinking also, too, uh, you talked about uh, going to be a matrimony taking place. That's going to 
a matrimony. That's what it means by the, we're going to enter into the bond of the covenant. Yeah. Right now, I'm born again. I'm, I'm, I'm married to the Lord and in relationship with him. And I'm in the new covenant. But this is the bond of the covenant. Yeah. When everybody entered the bond of the covenant, which some people call the marriage step of the Lamb. You, put, right. you finish, the other? You got something? Yes, sir. No, sir. Okay, Judy. Uh, I like uh, when you, uh, it's a blessing when you said you know, how the will and you explain how the, the will is going to look and even, even in the words. Like say, the Garden of Eden. Yeah, yeah. How, how, how it's going to look at the Garden of Eden. It's going to be the rivers and going to be the rivers in the desert. The rivers in the desert. So, you know, so people can't say, you know, put their mind on a will of this. Uh, like, yeah, like they think, when they think wilderness, they think in yeah. wilderness. Yeah. But it's going to be where it's, he said, I'm going to do a new thing in the wilderness. This time the wilderness is going to blossom like a rose. The first time they didn't. So the second wilderness ain't going to be like the first one, even though it's similar. Mm -hmm. And also to add on what um, Bishop just said, I also like how you, we, we've been, we listened, we read the scripture in Isaiah where they said that, um, where it said that God is going to do a new thing. We always uh, associated that to a new thing as far as other things. Other things. And, not and he really, was talking about the wilderness. Right, and we never knew. Yeah. Well, we know, but we never ever associated it to being the wilderness that yeah. he was going to make new for the people of God to yeah. be um, housed there while he do yeah. his thing on the earth. So Yeah, they I'm use like, it. Oh. He going to do a new thing, giving me a thousand, right, giving me a house, right, giving right, me a new thing. He wasn't even so, talking about that. I like how you broke the wilderness down and connected it actually with the scripture that yeah. relates to Isaiah. Yeah. 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 And so all of this stuff, and then like the second return of Christ. I've never heard nobody teach the second return of Christ is the second exodus. That's but that's that's what it is. Mm -hmm. But it's not explained like that. And when you don't explain it the way the prophet spoke yeah. it and it described it, you leave stuff out. Man. And I think that was done purposely. Because if you get to investigating this stuff and investigating the true Hebrews that were scattered all to all the nations through slavery, then you find out who they are. Yeah. And so they, they, they kept, kept this stuff, kept this stuff hidden. That's why they don't want you to watch from Hebrews the Negroes. Because mm -hmm. it exposing too much stuff. Anybody else? Okay. All right. Well, Elder, you want to close it out? <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. Thank the most high.